Okay, so this talk is going to be about the integration of rational function if the denominator splits completely into distinct linear factors. Okay, uh, so all it all its roots are real and they're all distinct. Okay, now there's a couple of simplifications I want to do quickly. The just just to keep keep the problem sort of the notationally the problem simple. So the first is I can reduce to the proper fraction case which means I can reduce to the case where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so we just explain that. Suppose I give you uh, this rational function. So suppose I give you, oh, sorry. let's say uh, x cubed over x plus 1. And I ask you to integrate this. Well, this the method I'm going to discuss is not for this thing. So what you do is, you see, if you have something like this, is you first reduce it to something uh, for which that for which the method I have is applicable. So what's the problem with this? Hmm? The problem with this? Yeah. Or how do you convert it to something uh, nicer? You you get rid of x plus one. You ch you change it to a sum of polynomial n. Oh well, yeah. In this case, you can actually do that. So I'll maybe I'll change my example. Uh, okay, let's. Okay, so in this case, you can do that. But I'll, I'll explain what I was saying. What, what I was saying is that is that if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, you can divide this like this. Okay, and you get x squared minus x plus one. The remainder of minus one, and then you can rewrite this as a mixed fraction. Okay, now this part's a polynomial, so you can integrate it, and this part is now in a form where the numerator has smaller degree than the denominator. Okay, now you are you are right that, that for this particular thing you can also substitute u as x plus one and get everything in terms of u. Uh but there, there are other cases where that's not directly possible. So suppose I give you say uh x to the seven plus x to the five minus four x cubed over x minus 1, x minus 2 dx, then what the method I'm saying would still be applicable. You would first divide this by this, okay? And then based on that division, you would be able to write it as a mixed fraction, okay? Hmm? And then the basically the mixed fraction where the uh, quotient appears as a, like a separate polynomial which you have to integrate plus the remainder polynomial over the denominator. Okay, and now, now you have to do this integration. Okay, the quotient you can integrate, it's a polynomial, so just a polynomial integration, the remainder over x minus 1, x minus 2, for that, now it's a situation where the denominator has, denominator has larger degree than the numerator, and so the methods I'm going to talk about are for that situation. Okay, so you can reduce any, any integration problem to a problem uh, any uh, rational function integration problem to a proper fraction situation. Okay, uh, you can also reduce it to a monic denominator case. That means that if in the denominator you can assume that the leading coefficient is one. Okay, so if I had uh, if I had let's say here I had uh, five here or something, I could have pulled the five out right at the beginning, right? So, so I can assume that, that, that the denominator, the leading coefficient is 1. So I'm going to make these two assumptions and I'm going to consider a generic integration problem of this type with these assumptions. Okay, so it's of the form uh, a polynomial divided by another polynomial which is a product of distinct linear factors. So alpha 1, alpha 2 to alpha n are all distinct. Okay. alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are all distinct. If you want, you can also assume that they are in increasing order. Uh, well, let, let me just assume that. Though the formula here doesn't depend on that being true, it's symmetric in all of them uh, for, our, for later discussion. Okay. Uh, but as such, what we're talking about right now doesn't depend on that. Okay, so far so good. So, 
So now there is a formula to do this integration. If the degree of this is less than n, the formula goes like this. Okay. So it's a uh, it's this thing. Now what is this? Uh, this is r evaluated at the value alpha i. Okay. And this is the product of alpha i minus all the other roots, the denominator. So this whole thing, this divided by this product is the coefficient of ln of x minus alpha i. And then you add these up for i equal 1 to n. And that is an antiderivative for this function. So that, that seems to be like a, something out of the blue, right? Where did we get this? That's, that's the question. And so I'm going to explain how you get this using partial fractions. Uh, once, once you've seen that, uh, then it, it's up to you. If you want to, whenever you see an integration of this type, you could either directly just write out the answer, uh, or you could actually uh, do the partial fractions method, which I'm going to show you to, to get it. So you don't have to remember this formula. Okay. Uh, if, if you're doing this for a course where your instructor wants you to do the partial fractions method in full, then, then you should do it the latter way use the partial fractions method, but it's just good to see that you can actually get a general version of formula for that. Okay. Okay. So what do we do? So what do we want to do? What's the idea? We have this. What do we want to rewrite it as? Hmm? What's the idea behind partial fractions? What do we want to rewrite this as? Uh, like what does partial fractions do? The integration method. We want to rewrite this as a sum of what type of things? One over. Well, not one over. Some constant over, yeah. Well, that's like one over. You can take the constant out. Well, after you, uh, when you're actually doing the integrations, yes. But yeah, so it's a okay. Another thing is you want to write this as a linear combination of what things? One over x minus alpha. Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, you want to write it in this form. Little c two x minus alpha two. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know what the word linear combination means, don't bother. Uh, basically, you just want to write it like this, where c1, c2 to cn are all constants, okay? Which we don't yet know, and they will depend on on r on the polynomial r and the values alpha. I mean, when we solve, okay? So, we, I mean, x is just a formal letter right now. We're not actually plugging any value for x. Okay. Rx, the polynomial r and the numbers alpha 1, alpha 2 to alpha n will actually be known to us in a particular integration problem. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, now, for those of you who, who do know what linear combinations are, can you just explain what I mean when I say you're writing it as a linear combination of the 1 over x minus alpha 1, 1 over x minus alpha 2 and so on? Well, it really is a sum of the terms times a constant. Yeah, that's what the definition of linear combination means. It means uh, uh, you are taking co constants times the things and then taking sums of those. So this is just basically the definition. Now, why, are, why am I trying to write it like this? Well, if I succeed, if I were to succeed in doing this, then then the integration problem would become easy, right? Because I know how to integrate each of these. And if I know how to integrate a bunch of functions, I know how to integrate their linear combinations. Mm -hmm. Now, it's crucial that degree of r is less than n, because if the degree of r is not less than n, then it's you actually cannot write it as a linear combination. So this works because the degree of r is less than n. Okay, I'm, so I'm sort of going to skip over exactly what's happening, but if you, if you took something of degree bigger than or equal to n, uh, it, you cannot write it as a linear combination. So the vector space spanned by 1 over x minus alpha onto 1 over x minus alpha is actually just the, uh, precisely the things where the 
uh, ra uh, rational function of the denominator of this in the numerator has degree less than n, say n dimensional space. Uh, but ignore that. Okay. So, okay, good. So now, let's assume it works. Okay, let's assume that, that in fact you do have these constants c1, c2 to cn. How would you actually find them? Well, uh, let's try to basically just solve for them. Okay. Now, one way you could do that is you could just uh, clear the denominator everywhere, right? So, you take a common denominator. So, what do you get? Rx is over this whole thing, over that whole thing. Just name it. Well, let's call it the denominator. Okay. Now, what does the first thing become? Well, we already have an x minus alpha 1, so you have to multiply that by all the others, right? Now, C2, what will happen? x minus alpha 1 times x minus alpha 3. So, you miss uh, x minus alpha 2. Oops. So, this should be 3 here. It got gobbled up. Basically, you miss the the one which was in its denominator. That's the only one you don't multiply by. Okay, so far so good. Now you can sort of remove the denominator from everywhere. Okay. So, let's scratch it out. You can remove the denominator from everywhere. And this is true in what sense? It's true as an identity in X. Okay. So, which means uh, it's true as, as an identity in X, which means it's true coefficient wise. So, if you just, if you just look at the polynomial on the left side as a polynomial in X, and look at the polynomial on the right side as a polynomial in X, and you just uh, expand them out and figure out the coefficients of each power, each coefficient should be equal to the corresponding coefficient. Okay? And if you actually work it out that way, you will, you will be able to figure out a system of uh, n uh, simultaneous linear equations in c1, c2 to cn, which you can then try to solve. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, but that's pretty tedious. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, show you another way, which crucially relies on, on the fact that there do exist solutions. Okay, because it sort of assumes that in the process. So I'm going to show you another way of solving this. Okay. So what's the idea here? Well, so We have this, this, uh, thing, right? We have this. Okay. I'll just copy it onto this. Sheet, so see. And I'll write it in shorthand. Rx is summation i equals one, oops, one to n. C i times product of from j from 1 to n, but j not equal to i of x minus alpha j. Okay? So, this is actually the same as what we wrote in the previous page, right? It's a sum of things where each, each time you're taking, like if you're at c1, you'll do C1 times the product of x minus alpha 2, x minus alpha 3, and so on. So, you take the product for all j from 1 to n except i. Okay? Hmm? Okay, good. Now, you can, this is true for all x, right? Okay, this is true for all x. So, you can plug in values of x. Okay, so suppose I plug in x equals alpha 1, what would I get? Hmm? You get r of alpha 1 equals c1 
mm -hmm. times x minus alpha 2. Not x, now it's x is alpha 1. Alpha 1 minus alpha 2 times alpha 1 minus alpha 3. Yeah, so, so alpha 1 minus alpha j. So it's basically, as you said, more explicitly, it's c1 alpha 1 minus alpha 2 alpha 1 minus alpha 3, so until alpha 1 minus alpha n. And why, what happens to the other terms in this summation? Become zero. Why? Because the other terms have the term alpha 1 minus alpha 1. Yes, so all the other things in the summation in the product where one of the factors in the product is alpha 1 minus alpha 1. There's, uh, have you, there's a joke which comes to mind here. Uh, so it's not really a joke, but it's, so somebody asks, what is this polynomial? Okay, what's this polynomial? Well, is it a joke? Yeah. Well, A, B, C, so these are just all the letters of the English alphabet. You're just doing x minus a, x minus b, x minus c. Oh, I thought that's x minus 2 in the end. Oh, this is z, sorry. So what, what, what is the domain of x? No, forget about the domain. Just formally, if I multiply all these polynomials, mm -hmm. uh, where a, b, c are, the, these are all the letters of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So what's this product? It's just a polynomial. Yeah, but what polynomial is it? Well, it's, it's the same as, as the trick you did here, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the terms here is going to be? Hmm? Going to be what? Well, one of the letters of the alphabet is X, right? <laughs> so one of the terms is going to be? Zero. Z, X minus X, which is zero. <laughs> and so the product is zero. Well, so this joke, uh, which, which maybe That's is not very... Unfair. I ask you what's the domain of x. This x may not be the x. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, it's, it's, it's not a real mathematical thing, but it's actually the same idea as here, right? Uh, when, you, when you are taking, uh, when you have this uh, rx as a sum of things times products, if, if you put x as alpha 1, then for any, any i which is not 1, you'll have an x minus alpha 1 term, so you'll have an alpha 1 minus alpha 1 term there, so that will go away. Okay? So you'll get something like this. Uh, and so what is C1? Uh, alpha 1 over the product. Uh, I could, of course, just write 2j from 2 to n, but I'm writing it in a way I can easily generalize. So alpha 1 minus alpha j. Now I can get, can I get a general formula for CI? Yeah. Same idea, what will it be? Uh, alpha i. Hmm? The product j from 1 to n, j is now equal to i. Hmm? Alpha i minus alpha j. Okay. Uh, so now I found the, the constant uh, ci. Okay. And now I can get back to the original uh, integration problem, right? So, so the, the, the function is, so the, the thing Rx over whatever the denominator was, the product of all those is, uh, C1 over X minus alpha 1 plus C2 over X minus alpha 2 plus so what's the what's the integral? C one times x minus alpha. Okay. okay. So the integral of this is just the same linear combination of their antiderivatives, right? Because integration is is sort of linear. Well, I said sort of because we are doing indefinite integration, so there's a little certainty, but it's not well defined. It's defined up to constants. But okay, and now you have this, and then you put a plus c. Now that you have this, now you can combine uh, this thing 
and uh, this expression you have for C, uh, C i, okay, is this here? Yeah. yeah, you combine this and this expression and you will get the big thing here. Okay, so this part is just doing the C, uh, I mean this, this part is just finding out C i, okay, and then you are just summing up uh, overall i. So this is great, right? Uh, for some of you who find this too confusing, we, you can actually uh, look at the quadratic case, which is in a separate video where it's it's a little easier to see uh, what's happening. Okay, uh, okay, great. So we'll talk more about related things in the next video.